This is Sean Andrews. I'm the lead development engineer for the DM series products here at Lenovo. I'm going to be walking you through the initial setup and configuration of the cluster as you would receive it from manufacturing. When you first receive the product, one of the things you will need to do is connect up the serial cables to the system. Once the serial cables are connected up and you've brought up a Windows 2019 level desktop, you will see a cluster setup wizard prompt. From this prompt, you will do your initial node configuration. That is the first step we are going to walk through here. So it doesn't matter whether you do this configuration from node one or node two. Either one of them will allow you to start the process. We're going to just pick the one that is on the left here. You will need to select the node management interface port to use. You will always be using the E0 import for your node configuration. You will need to set up your first IP address. This is the IP address that you will finish the configuration from using the GUI for the rest of the process. In my case, I have static IP addresses already available. So I'm going to finish that process right here. After that process is complete, you will get a message telling you that you will that you can configure the rest of the system using either the GUI or the CLI. We're going to finish it through the GUI because that is the simplest process. So now that I have this initial configuration done, I will connect into that IP address. The configuration is always done using HTTPS. You will get this error message telling you that it is insecure. That is because it has a self-signed certificate. Just go ahead and accept that message. It will now come up to configure the rest of the cluster. This is what they call the guided setup menu. Go ahead and select guided setup from the center menu here. The system will now go out and begin discovering all the nodes that are available for the cluster configuration. You need to ensure that at least two nodes are present during the configuration process. You will see them listed in the center of the screen. In my case, they are nodes 142 and 141. You can see that they are both in a good state and they are ready to be finalized. It will also come up and ask you for your feature keys at this point. If you have additional feature keys, you can add them in. The system should, for manufacturing, have the feature keys already installed, so you should not need to install any of the base keys that were ordered when your system was received. At this point, it will begin creating the cluster process itself by adding the two nodes in. The first part of the process is the cluster create, where the first node is added in. Once that process completes, it then begins the, cl the cluster join process, where the second node is added in. After this, we will need to configure the networking. This will include the cluster IP addresses, as well as the node IP addresses for each of the nodes that are being added in. The second part of the process, we will now set up the cluster IP addresses. You can see that the node IP address for the first node that I configured is present in the middle here. They need to be in the same subnet for the cluster to be created properly. In selecting the port for the cluster management, you're only selecting the home node for that cluster management. It can either be serviced on node one or node two. You 
our recommendation is to ensure that the service processor management ports are placed in an isolated network away from your cluster IP addresses and your node IP addresses. This is to ensure that there is no crosstalk. In my case, I will be placing them in a 169 network so that they cannot be routed to the internal ports themselves. You will also need to determine your DNS details as well as NTP. I do not have a network time server, so I'm going to disable it. I am, however, going to configure all of the DNS for my lab. This next, pro next step, we will configure the support itself. Because I placed my service processor addresses in an isolated network, I had to also change the subnet mask and the gateway associated with those ports. It is important to remember that if you want to be able to remotely power the nodes on and off, they need to be in the same network segment as the management ports because the commands for the power on are sent through the management network. So in that case, I would have all four service processors as well as node addresses in the same physical network segment. In this step, you will configure how logs are forwarded in for event alerts. In my case, I'm going to send them using a syslog server that we have set up in our lab. You can send it either via SNMP, email, or syslog. The next step is configuring the physical storage itself. In my case, I'm going to take the default settings. You can also skip this step if you choose and manually create your data aggregates later if you choose so. These data aggregates will be split between the two nodes equally with each node owning the same number of drives. When this process is complete, I will have four aggregates created to total. There will be two root aggregates, one for each node, and two data aggregates, one for each node. In the last step, I can configure my storage virtual machine. Because I do not have any licenses installed on my system, however, I cannot complete this step at this time, so I'm going to skip it. At this point, the cluster creation process is actually completed. And I can manage the cluster itself. I will now be redirected from the node IP address to the cluster IP address itself. At this point, you can finalize any of the steps needed to bring your system online. That includes creating any new user accounts if they need to be created, or in my case, I would need to configure my storage virtual machines so that I could service data. Since I only have data aggregates created at this point and no storage virtual machines, I have no ability to service data at this point. A user, however, would be able to service data using the licenses that were installed out of the manufacturing process itself. This concludes this demo.